What's going on guys? Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com down in the SR4U boot room as you can very clearly see by my surroundings. It's been reorganized since the last time that you saw it to make this video which is a video on what is quite possibly the world's biggest personal collection of football boots slash soccer cleats. It's about 700 plus pairs in total, a thousand pairs in total down in the SR4U boot room when you include my sneakers, which is ridiculous to think about. So I wanted to give you guys a tour of my entire collection, not necessarily show you every single pair, but give you the highlights of what exactly I have, which is pretty much everything, sad to say. Nonetheless, I think this is gonna be an interesting video. So if you guys do end up enjoying this, be sure to support it with a like. And what's also crazy to think about is I've essentially done reviews on all of these shoes. They're up on my channel. So if you're into soccer cleats, you're into football boots, whatever you call them where you're from, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you aren't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. With that said, let's take a look at the collection. Okay, so starting in this corner, um, basically these are all Jordans. So this has nothing to do with boots, cleats, nothing like that. But I'll give you guys a look at something that I have here. I don't buy as many sneakers as I once did, but here's something that I have here. Uh, these are Jordan 6 infrareds that I don't think I've worn yet, but I definitely have them. This is basically my section where I have all the older, more collectible, more valuable stuff. So this is probably the, the really cool section of my collection, at least in my opinion. So right here on this top row, I have a whole bunch of older T90 models. Um, so stuff from like the very first T90 right here, you can see the older box. Those of you guys that remember these five dots, that's the Alpha Project from Nike. This is the original T90, the Air Zoom T91. Really, really cool shoe. A lot of pros still use this particular stud pattern on their boots. And then I have other cool stuff like this guy right here, which is probably my favorite T90 that they ever made, the original T90 Laser 1. Uh, also, if you're wondering why there's only one shoe in the box, that's because the other half of some of these pairs is upstairs in my office in the SR4U uh, on the boot wall that I have in the background of pretty much all of my videos. So a whole bunch of T90 stuff up here. Right here, I have some limited edition Tiempo stuff. So you can see these two gold boxes. I'm sure you guys are familiar with the Toti boots that recently came out. Then right here, something pretty cool. These are the Tiempo Legend 5s in the Ronaldinho colorway. So uh, if you guys remember back to when Ronaldinho got his own signature colorway of the Legend 5 with the added tongue, white and gold, really, really good looking shoe. Um, pretty limited as well. I think these were limited to 3,000 total pairs. Another cool pair that I have while we're on the theme of Ronaldinho are these guys right here, which is the Tiempo Ronaldinho. So this is his original signature model. There was a one, there was a two, but this is the original Ronaldinho boot in this brown and gold color. You can see the big flap tongue extends over the whole laces. Really, really cool shoe. Glad I have these in the collection. Below those, I have some older Tiempo models as well. So take a look at these. This is the original Tiempo legend. These are awesome, especially in the white and red colorway. Big fan of how these look. Such a cool looking shoe, especially the sole plate. And then over here, I also have something interesting in the form of this box right here, which you probably don't recognize. This is, as far as I know, the oldest pair in my collection. Found these on eBay, so I figured I'd pick them up. I'm honestly not even sure if these are high end or low end, but it's a really old pair of Nikes, um, kind of a Tiempo style. It's called the Tiempo Pro M. M, I believe just stands for men's. Um, but I'm not even sure exactly what they are. Really cool looking though, obviously very, very old. Um, they're actually kind of crusty how old they are, but uh, they are in brand new condition and something that again, is probably the oldest boots that I have in my collection. And then I'll give you guys a look at one more really cool pair that I have, which is this guy right here. Now what's cool about these, these are Tiempo Premier. So the Premier is now back, but it was a shoe way back when. So this is pre-Tiempo Legend. Um, this is a full leather boot with the fold over flap tongue, old school design, but very high quality. These actually have probably some of the nicest leather I've ever seen on a pair of Nikes and they're quite old. So really, really cool to have. Below that, I have a whole bunch of Phantom Ones. Some of these are limited, some of these aren't limited. You can see this one right here. Some of you guys may recognize it. It comes in this fancy box with the cool pattern. And on the inside, you'll see the shoes themselves, which are black in color. But when heat is applied to the upper, which is gonna happen when you start to wear them, it actually reveals the pattern that you see there on the insole in a nice bright orange. And then once they cool off, it goes back to its original color. 
You got the spider or the black widow there on the heel. And I believe these are limited to 500 or 600 pairs. So really, really difficult to come by. Right here, I have the sample variation of the original Hypervenom Phantom. So you guys probably recognize this colorway, but if you know your Phantom ones, you'll immediately recognize that the upper on this has a different mesh base where it's a little bit more open. And then the sole plate, which is pretty obvious, has a completely different layout. You have a different stud pattern here in the forefoot and then three studs in the heel versus the usual four. Really, really cool. Glad I have these in the collection. And then finally at the bottom, I actually have some indoor models that are slightly limited. This being probably the most interesting one of the bunch. This is an Elastico Superfly, the very first one they ever put out, which was super, super limited. These things sold out pretty much instantly. And of course it's in that Superfly 4 World Cup colorway glow-in-the-dark sole on these guys, and a colorway, just a shoe in general that I know a lot of people really, really like. Over here, I have a whole bunch of other stuff from Nike. You can see all these black boxes. These are all, all, all Nike IDs. They're unmarked, so I'll just grab one just to see what it is. I'm not even sure what's going to be in this box, so we'll be surprised together. So these are Nike ID Magista Obra 1s in a, a Brazil-themed uh, colorway, which was for the 2014 World Cup, held in Brazil. So I did the blue and the volt yellow. Thought it was a pretty cool shoe. Um, definitely a little bit different than any of the colorways we got uh, from the general releases. On this shelf, I have a whole bunch of Mercurial Superflies, even the pre-Superfly, which is this guy right here, the Vapor 4 SL. Some of you guys may remember this. So this is the first ever shoe from Nike as a general release that actually had a carbon fiber sole plate, which later became a signature of the Superfly line. So they put this carbon fiber sole plate as well as the carbon heel counter. This was the only shoe that ended up having this on top of the Vapor 4 uh, upper. So this is the uh, Marina Volt colorway, one of my favorites of the Vapor 4. And overall, I think this is one of the best looking shoes of all time. Another interesting pair of Superflies that I have right here is a sample of the original Superfly 1 that never ended up releasing to the public. This is the one that uh, they ended up scrapping because I believe it was Drogba, Luis Fabiano, as well as Andre Arshavin who were testing blackout pre-production models. They all had them rip in game. So Nike kind of panicked. They pulled these from production and this is a sample. So it's got a different upper variation to the one that I actually released. And it also has the perforated foam pads on the inside of the heel that the regular version didn't end up having. And of course the carbon fiber sole plate with the iconic holes in the studs that we only ended up having on the Superfly 1, at least when you're talking about the ones in the forefoot. Below, I have a whole bunch of Mercurial Vapor. So basically one to nine are right here in this particular section. So some interesting ones that I have, here's a pair of Vapor 3 samples. There's nothing special about them, it is just a pre-production sample pair, but they're in this really nice kind of metallic uh, navy blue or a really, really glossy navy blue, the white and silver uh, fade in the heel. And then it's a soft ground one. You can see these are some pretty lethal soft ground studs. I also have some pretty interesting Vapor 9s. Grab one right here. These are the Mercurial Vapor 9 in the Reflective Pack colorway. So some of you guys might remember this. These weren't super limited, but they sold pretty quickly. It's all white in color with the black swoosh and the neon green accents in the liner as well as on the sole plate. But it has the reflective touch of what is essentially a cheetah print going around the heel area, as well as the reflective bits in the laces. On the very bottom here, I have some CTR 360 stuff. So obviously the line that got taken over by the Magistas and some pretty cool stuff here as well. This is the non-public release variation of the Euro 2012 CTR 360 Maestri 2 Elite. The Elite model was available in some colorways, but not this one. So you can see this has the carbon fiber sole plate and the different stud pattern that was exclusive to the Elite pack with of course the upper from the Euro 2012 Clash pack, um, which looks really cool in the half white half blue color scheme. Moving on up here, we have a whole bunch of older Adidas models. So this is a lot of the older F50s and some of the older Tunit stuff, which we'll get to in just a second. So this is to give you guys an idea of what exactly is here. Um, I'll grab a pair of F50s. This is an F50 Addy Zero. It doesn't say what year it is. Okay, so this is one of the more recent ones, the last one which came out in 2015 in this really interesting green color. You can see these ones are worn with all the dirt there on the bottom but a pretty cool looking shoe overall. Um, there's also some cool limited edition Adidas stuff up here in the form of this guy. Uh, I really like these. I think this is one looking back, people are gonna be really unhappy about not having these. This is the Tattoo Pack F50 Addy Zero. So you can see the graphic there on the front. And then when you open it up, it has some of the most detailed graphics on a pair of shoes ever, all the way around the entire upper, even on the sole plate. And they are different, the left and right boot 
Uh, looks like a tattoo essentially, so very, very cool pack. And I believe these were pretty limited as well. So this middle section right here, these nine pairs are some of the most rare, valuable shoes in my entire collection. Probably close to $5,000, $6,000, $7,000 for all of these in terms of their resale value, depending on how you want to value them, of course. I'll give you a look at these ones right here. You can see the CR7 box. This is the Rare Gold Superfly 4, which was an extremely limited release, but a very, very cool shoe. Only 333 pairs in total. It's got the gold sparkle to it, fades to black, and then the gold detailing on the sole plate as well with the soft ground studs and the CR7 logo right there on the medial side. Probably the rarest shoe in my entire collection or one that at least is really, really difficult to come by. And if you do find a pair, they're extremely expensive. It's this guy right here. You can see the Nike Black History Month logo there on the box. And this is the Black History Month Superfly 4, which again, such a cool looking shoe. Really, really detailed pattern there with the white and black and then the gold detail and the outline for the swoosh carbon fiber sole plate, of course, and probably the best looking Superfly 4 Nike ever put out. Extremely limited though. If I had to guess, I'd say there's probably under 100 pair of these out there. One more from this section, I'll give you guys a look at these. They're not Mercurials technically, although they're very Mercurial-esque. You can see it comes in a fancy box. It even has the numbering on the box, only 2012 pairs. These are the Nike GS Concepts. So this is the original Nike GS. There was a GS2 as well that wasn't quite as limited as these, but this is a really, really cool looking shoe. Absolutely horrible to wear, but the black and neon yellow there at the toe, I always thought looked really, really nice. One of the coolest sole plates you'll find on any shoe as well. And you can see these have aged a little bit. They're not that old, only from 2012, but the heel is starting to fog up a little bit. They're still brand new, but that is sometimes how these materials age. So right here, I have some stuff mixed up, Nike and Adidas boots. Here's a pair of Adi Zero Crazy Lights, so the 99 gram Adi Zero. These were limited to 299 pairs. You can see the numbering right there on the heel. And they're essentially see-through, very, very thin, super, super light. Just a really cool item to have, although honestly not the most wearable boot in the world. Below those, I have some really interesting older original Predator models, some original F50s, as well as some Yeezys, which we'll take a look at in just a second. For Predators, we'll take a look at these. You can see you got an older Adidas box, and this is the Adidas Predator Precision in the Champions League colorway. Um, I believe this was a Champions League colorway. So you can see it's the blue, the red, and the white. Such a cool looking shoe overall, and it's a soft ground one as well. So you have the super lethal, very dangerous looking soft ground stud pattern that Adidas was using at the time on the Predator line. I also have some really interesting original F50 models. This is the first ever F50. So before they did the Tunits, before they did the Adi Zeros, they did this shoe right here, which is the F50. That was simply the name. And it's a really cool looking shoe. This is the silver, black, and orange colorway. So you have kangaroo leather in silver at the toe, and then kind of this canvas textile material for the rest of the upper. This is also a soft ground variation. And again, I just think this is a really cool design overall. And of course, what would a collection video be without some kind of Yeezys? This is the only Yeezy branded anything that I have. And they're technically not even soccer cleats. They're American football shoes, but I have them in the collection nonetheless. You can see it's the Yeezy 350 upper kind of with an American football sole plate with the studs. Um, I guess some professional players wear them, wore them. I think they got fined for wearing them. But it's an interesting shoe, not the most comfortable thing in the world in all honesty, but a cool thing to have in the collection. And then finally here at the bottom, I have a really cool tunit set. So one of them is a small set, one of them is the premium kit, which I have right here. It's essentially a giant suitcase that includes the entire tunit system and then three sets of uppers. So on the one side, you can see the gray and green upper that it comes with. It's got the stud tool. It's got all of the extra studs right here. You get the chassis on the inside as well. And then you actually get an orange set as well as this Climacool blue set all in this giant package. Believe it or not, this used to be a thing. This is the Adidas glitch before the Adidas glitch. Over here, I have a whole bunch of limited edition Adidas stuff that they put in these giant boxes that I have to put at the top, otherwise they don't fit in the sections properly. So that's why they are stacked a little bit higher. These blank boxes are actually some my Adidas stuff, so customized colorways. Here's a look at some customized 11 Pro 3s. Uh, these are pretty cool in that they're themed after the original Addy Power colorway, hence the Addy Power customization right there on the side. Definitely a pretty interesting boot. Right here in this middle section, I have 
probably the most limited Adidas boots in my entire collection. So for those of you guys that remember the Predator Instinct, they did a special Predator Instinct tongue and eyes. So this is the eyes variation. I don't think I ever made a video on these super, super limited. I forget how limited they were. I wanna say it was like 100 pairs or something like that. And then here is the tongue variation. So it doesn't actually have the regular Predator elements, but it does have the added tongue with the original Predator logo there, which I thought was a really cool touch. And of course, it's just based on the Predator Instinct base. Over here, I have some miscellaneous stuff, some older F50 Addy Zeros. This is a 2010 F50. So you can see these soft ground variation in the white and pink colorway. Really, really cool looking shoe. And then down here, nothing too interesting in all honesty. Some older Nitro Charge models, some Ace 15s, some older 11 Pros. And then at the very bottom right here, I've got some really interesting stuff. There is the Super Atoms that you guys saw in a video not too long ago from Puma. Very limited shoe. Right here, I have something I found on eBay. These are Reebok Sprint Fit Light Pros. For those that remember back when Thierry Henry switched from Nike to Reebok, this is the shoe that they made for him, which was essentially a Reebok variation of a Mercurial Vapor 3. Um, and I actually thought these looked really cool as a kid. Now that I have a pair, they're honestly not the greatest thing in the world, but definitely something really cool that a lot of people don't necessarily know about to have in the collection. So up here, I've got, again, some miscellaneous stuff, some more recent limited edition releases from Adidas that we don't necessarily need to take a look at. And then over here, I've got a collection of different messy boots from over the years. So I'll try to pull one out just so you guys can get a look at one. This is a messy 10.1. So when the messy signature model was essentially just an F50 Addy Zero with his own brand on it. These are really interesting in this kind of orange and teal colorway. Not the best looking of the messy signatures, but still pretty interesting nonetheless. Right here, I have a stockpile of some older Adidas models. So you can see I've got six pairs of Predator Instincts. I haven't really uh, got rid of too many of them just because I'm a big fan of this shoe in general. So here's a look at the whiteout ones where you can see the Predator elements. They're not that old, but because it's translucent rubber, it starts to age over time and it turns a little bit yellow, which is bad, but at the same time, I kind of think it's a little bit cool. And then down here, I have a whole bunch of limited edition Puma stuff. So you can see right here, I've got, uh, these aren't actually Puma, but this is a shoe that I've had for a little while now. It's an Air Zoom Total 92 in a trainer variation. So you can see it's got an air unit at the bottom. Uh, really, really interesting shoe. I love this champagne maroon color that it is as well. And again, it's one of those shoes that I've had for pretty much forever. Don't have the original box anymore, but I keep them around just because I like them. Uh, the rest of the Puma gear though here, uh, pretty interesting stuff. I've got some of the player issue boots that Puma did a little while ago. These are the Marco Royce Evo Speed 1.3s. And what's cool about this pack or this collection, I should say, is that Puma released the pro variation of the shoes. So the variation of the Evo Speed that Marco Royce himself actually wears in a special colorway. So you can see it's got the half neon yellow, half black color scheme, obviously to match Dortmund. And it's a little bit different from what you would get from a regular Evo Speed 1.3. So this is the section where you're basically entirely surrounded by shoes, which is kind of cool in its own way. I'm also right here in the middle of the room, just because the way I reorganized it, I didn't necessarily have space for this. These are all my match balls that I've kind of accumulated, never really intended on collecting these, but uh, it's something that I have put them in the middle of the room. If you guys want to see a video on these, maybe that's something that I can organize for you guys, but uh, that's the reason why they're here in the middle, just because there's nowhere else to put them. So moving on to this corner right here, uh, this is pretty much all sneakers, kind of like what we saw over there. So this is all lifestyle sneakers, mostly from Nike. There's some Lee Ming stuff there at the bottom that I have that I thought was kind of cool. More Nike stuff right here. So running shoes, training shoes, basketball shoes, all kinds of different stuff. Got a bunch of Adidas stuff right here, some Under Armour, some Vans, uh, Puma, Reebok, miscellaneous stuff all here. So basically from here to there is all sneakers, not necessarily soccer related. Nonetheless, moving on to this corner, we've got a whole bunch of current and slightly older Nike stuff. So up here, these are all of my Superfly 5s. I guess I'll pull one down to see what we get. I don't even know which one this is. This might be a boring one. Oh, it is a boring one. This is. The most recent CR7 shoe, you guys are familiar with this. You don't need to see more of that. So Superfly 5's up there, and then down here, I've got all my Phantom 3's, which that shoe just came out, so there's not too many of them as of right now. But there's Phantom 3's here. Here's a look at something. This is the women's colorway, uh, the recent Motion Blur Pack color. So pretty interesting right there. So right here, I've got all my Vapor 11's and all my Legend 6's. 
quite a few pairs of those just because I've accumulated a few colorways. So I'll give you guys a look at something here. This is the Camo Pack Tiempo Legend 6. That's why it comes in this special camo box. And you can see it's pretty much an all black shoe with the reflective swoosh, but it's got the camo graphic there on the sole plate, as well as on the heel area. The Tiempo branding's reflective as well. So kind of a cool little extra detail there. And then on the very bottom, I have a whole bunch of Nike takedown models. Nothing really too crazy to see right there. Over here, I've got all my Nike Magista Obra 2s, which you guys are gonna be pretty familiar with. Down here, I've got some Opus 2s, as well as Superfly 4s. So Superfly 4s, obviously that's the previous model now. I didn't necessarily have anywhere great to put them. So I just put them right here for now. I'll give you guys a look at one pair. What do I got right here? Don't even know. We'll take a look. We'll be surprised together. So this is the silverware colorway in this super sparkly silver kind of glittery upper. So kind of similar to those rare golds that we saw, but a little bit more vibrant overall. Below that, we have some more Magista Obras. So the original Obra, not the Obra 2. We'll grab one of these as well, just because they're always cool to see. These are, let's see which ones these are. I don't even know. So this is the Stealth Pack one. So this is one of the first ones that came out actually with the all black upper, the white outline, and then the little detail in volt yellow at the top of the collar. Really, really cool colorway. This is the pair that I did actually wear. And then right below, we have all kinds of Phantom 2s. Again, the previous generation. So just there for now until I can figure out what to do with them and where to put them. So moving on over here, I have a whole bunch of Adidas stuff. This is the big chunk of, I guess, the current Adidas boots. So up here, I have a whole bunch of Pure Chaos. Here, I have a whole bunch of X16.1s. Here, I have a whole bunch of indoors and turf models from Adidas. This is the Mundial teams that I actually wear. So you can see these ones are modified where the tongue is completely cut off. Pretty well worn, actually. I'm a big fan of these. This is actually one of my personal favorite turf shoes of all time, and I still wear them even with all the recent stuff that's available. Below that, I have a whole bunch of Adidas takedown models, so nothing too interesting there. And then on the very bottom, I have some miscellaneous Adidas A16 stuff, so the previous generation. I'll grab a pair of Pure Controls right here so you can see what I got. So this is the original Pure Control colorway in brand new condition uh, in that green colorway that a lot of people really liked. I'm personally not too crazy about these now looking back. So over here is some more current Adidas stuff. So I've got some 17 plus pure controls here, some A17.1s and all the different variations, some messy boots, so the 16.1s and the pure agilities, some Copa 17.1s here. My Adidas glitches are right here in this box. You can see them right there. Pretty cool looking shoe uh, with this kind of feathered look to it, multicolor. And then on the bottom, you're gonna find some miscellaneous Copa Mundials and Gloros. Here's actually a pretty cool pair of Copas. These are the white and black reverse colorway. So you can see they're essentially a reverse of a regular Copa, which again, kind of a cool limited edition release that I did end up wearing. So would have liked to have had a new pair, but had to wear them. So over here, I've got some of the smaller brands. So some Diodoras up here, some Jomas right here, a whole bunch of different Under Armour stuff. You can see the current Under Armour box in black. And then the older one, in this metallic chrome. So let's see what's in here. This is the Blur Carbon 3 in the synthetic upper variation. Really one of my personal favorite shoes of all time. I prefer the kangaroo leather model. But this was just a fantastic shoe in general and probably the first really, really good model that Under, Under Armour ended up releasing. So underneath the Under Armour stuff, I have some Umbro stuff as well. I guess the interesting stuff here is the press kits that I've gotten over the years. So this is a press kit from the Umbro Velocita 3 Pro. Here's a press kit from the UX Acuros. Here's a press kit from the, um, these are the Medusas, the Umbro Medusas. And then uh, they're all just kind of fancy boxes that are a little bit different from the retail ones that are huge and take up a ton of space. So over here, I have pretty much all of the current and some older Puma gear as well. So some Evo Touch Pros up top, some Evo Speeds as well, the Evo Power Vigor ones. I got a press kit for, uh, I believe this was one of the half and half packs. You can see it says Evo Power and Evo Speed. And these are like solid metal. Like this thing weighs, I would say probably a good 15 pounds. It's, it's remarkably heavy. We'll put that back. Got a press kit right there for some Evo Power 1.3s. Some more older Evo Power models there. And then it's mixed in with Kings, Evo Speeds and Evo Powers all right here in this section. Right here next to those, I have a whole bunch of Nike takedown, not Nike takedown, Nike indoor and turf models up top. I'll grab a pair right here. I'm not sure why this was open, but you can see on the inside, this is the original Magista X Proximo. 
with the leather covering for the front half of the upper. Pretty cool colorway, these were fairly popular. And then underneath all of these indoors, which basically span from here to here, uh, you're gonna find some older Vapor 10s, which I'm not sure why these are here. I guess I just didn't have any space for them, but I'll grab a pair just to show you guys. I don't know what colorway this is. But these are Vapor 10s in the CR7 colorway here in blue. Actually a really, really good looking shoe with the black detail there at the heel. And then underneath all of these Vapors, we have some Magista Opus 1s as well as some Tiempo Legend 5s. And something pretty interesting right here, these are Tiempo Super Legera 3. So this is actually a shoe that's only available to Asian markets. It's called the Super Legera. And it's kind of a variation of the Tiempo Legend. You get kangaroo leather at the toe. It's not a full leather shoe, but definitely a very, very interesting shoe in this kind of Brazil themed colorway actually a really nice pair to wear. And then next to all that Nike stuff, I have my Mizuno, my New Balance, my Asics, and some Pantofolo Doro. So Mizuno, I have a fair bit of, just because I'm a big fan of this brand. I think every time I talk about them, I say they're underrated, but they really are underrated. You should consider Mizuno if you haven't before. Grab these right here. This is my original Mizuno Wave Ignitus. So this is probably one of the oldest pairs in terms of parts of my collection that exist because of my reviewing soccer shoes thing. So this is a pair of Mizuno Wave Ignituses that I got a lot of wear out of. You can see they're very, very well worn. Super, super comfortable shoe. And probably my favorite Wave Ignitus that they ever came out with. Really cool in this black and yellow colorway as well. Below the Mizuno stuff, I have a bunch of New Balance. So miscellaneous stuff, they obviously haven't been around all that long. Here's some white out or I guess mostly white New Balance Fizarro's. So below the New Balance stuff, I have some ASIC stuff that's all kind of older. I haven't done reviews on ASICs as of late, but I'm planning on doing a little bit more. Here's some ASICs Lethal Tigre or Fives in a white and red colorway. This is a really, really interesting shoe. Kind of unusual to wear, very cool stud pattern, very, very good. Um, but again, something that I've hung on to. Hopefully I'll bring some more ASIC stuff in soon. And then below that, we have some Pantafolo Doro stuff, which is always very cool, but a little bit, I guess, high maintenance to wear if it's your only pair of shoes. Luckily, I don't have that issue. But here's some Lazzarini's in yellow. Kind of an ugly colorway in all honesty now, now that I'm seeing them again after a while, but uh, really, really cool shoe, old school construction, uh, and just very old school in general. So if you guys follow me behind right here, you're gonna see that there's a whole bunch of boxes stacked here. And these are basically boxes that I'm kind of undecided on. There are shoes in them, but I'm not exactly sure if I'm gonna hang on to them or get rid of them. I just don't necessarily have a place for them as of right now. And then coming back to this section over here on the ground, you can see this box full of all kinds of different shoes. These are samples and different shoes that I have that don't have a box or I didn't get them with the box. So they live in this box together for now until I can figure out what to do with them. And then this box is kind of the same situation. It's some older, more limited stuff that I don't have the original box for. Uh, and they're all in string bags or bags that I found for them. So there's not just loose in there, but here's a pretty cool pair actually. This is a pro issued variation of the Mercurial Vapor 10 with the older style sole plate on there from the Vapor 6 and Vapor 7, um, which is pretty interesting, a pro issue variation essentially. All right guys, so that is it for the collection video. I know it's a lot to take in. It's still crazy for me every single time that I walk down here and I only have you guys to thank for all of this. None of this would be possible without your continued support. So thank you so much for making this possible in the first place. Nonetheless, if you guys did enjoy the video, be sure to support it with a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily reviews on all the latest and greatest soccer gear as well. That's something that I do predominantly on this particular channel. So if you're not subscribed, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Any questions, guys, I'll do my best to answer them down below in the comments. Uh, all my social media information is linked down below in the description as well. And other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, thanks for watching. Right here, I have some stuff all mixed up, some Nike and Adidas stuff. Those are, those, those are the...